Hello and welcome to the video tutorial for Light HUD. Today we're going to be walking you through the basics of setting up your first texture HUD. We're going to be targeting this example object with our texture HUD. This is simply three planes, each one is their own prim that are linked together. To start, we're going to want to take our links at finder script out of our HUD folder and put that in our example object. This will allow the object to tell us what the link number and face number is of the part we click when we click it. This will be useful for figuring out where we're targeting our HUD actions. The next thing we need to do is get our physical HUD ready. You can make this out of mesh or make it out of prims, it's entirely up to you. Today we're going to be making it out of prims so that anyone can follow along. We're going to make a base HUD and then a little panel for two additional buttons that we'll go over later. We'll make this black and now we have the base of our HUD. Next, we'll want to make our buttons. Light HUD takes the texture information off of face zero. On a default prim, that's this top face. Face zero does not need to be the face that's clicked or that is facing your customer, but today we're going to make it be that face because it's easier for us. So now we have our face zero rotated towards us, we can shrink these buttons down to an appropriate size. We are going to be targeting each of these with one of three colors of one of three shapes, a circle, a square, and a triangle, so we're going to need nine buttons. And then off to the side, we want our two additional buttons that we'll talk about in a bit. Our next step is to name all of our buttons. Because we're going to be using materials in this demonstration, the name needs to be texture. If you want to just target the diffuse layer, you can name your button diffuse instead. Next we need to figure out where we're targeting. I want this top row to be circles, and I want the circles to apply to the left panel. So we click the left panel and it says link number 3 and face number 0. So we go to our top row, and we input link number 3 and face number 0. We then want our square on the middle here, so we're going to click the middle. It's link number 1 and face number 0, so we're going to input 1 and 0 here. And then finally, we want our triangle on the right, which is going to be link number 2 and face number 0. For our two additional buttons, we want them to target all three of these. So we're going to input 1 0, slash, 2 0, slash, 3 0. The next step is to start applying our textures. We want the top row to be circles, so we're going to texture them with our circle textures. We want the middle row to be squares, so we'll drag those textures over. And, finally our triangles. Our materials also simply apply to the same buttons. So, on our circles we're going to apply our circle specular map. On our squares, we'll apply our square specular map. And for the triangles, we'll apply our triangle specular map. We can then adjust our gloss, environment, and color to our liking. In this case, I want the color of these to be red, and I want these to be blue. Now that we have our primary HUD set up, we can look at our additional buttons. For the first of these buttons, I want to reset the object to just blank, with no specular maps. So we're going to have no specular maps, and our texture is just going to be blank, and that will do it. For the second one, I want it to set all three panels to, to their white shape textures. For this, we need a multi-texture button instead of a texture button. We're going to go to the name and change it to multi-texture. This will change the behavior of the script. 
Instead of taking its texture data from face zero, as all the other buttons do, it will instead increment the face that it takes the texture data from with each subsequent target in the description. It will start with taking face zero for the first target, then face one for the second target, and then finally face two for the third target. So we're going to want our first face to be our square, because that's the first one in our description. So we'll apply our white square texture and square specular map. Then, face 1 is going to target our second prim, which is the triangle, so our next face will be the triangle texture and specular. Finally, the last in our list is the circle. So we'll apply our white circle and specular to face 2. With this done, it's time to link up our objects. And we can name it whatever we like. The next step is going to be to actually script the HUD. For this, we start by making a new note card. We put a number at the start, it can be 5 or 6 digits, it doesn't really matter. Afterwards, we can put whatever text we want as a marker for our future selves. Once we have the note card named, we simply drag the note card into each of our objects. The HUD and the receiver. In the receiver, we can also delete the links at Finder, we don't need it anymore. We can then drop our receiver into the object we want to be retexturing. It will say current channel offset, and it will tell you the number. And then we do the same with the core and the HUD. It will also tell you the current channel offset. These two numbers should match, otherwise you have done something wrong. It will also tell you that the HUD requires initialization. To do this, we simply drop the initializer into the HUD. It will tell you to please stand by, and then it will tell you it is ready to use. At this point, you now have a functional HUD. You can change your circles, squares, and triangles to your heart's content. We have a reset button and another button that sends us back to white. Congratulations, you're finished. You can now perm the scripts and object no transfer and sell it to your customers. If you have any questions or run into trouble, feel free to reach out to Alkaya XNR in Second Life. Good luck with your future content creation.